I've had a great experience racing the Skoda Virtual Women's Tour so far. I never expected my first women's tour to be from my own living room, but so far it's been really good fun. 600 metres to go now. Dixon uh, starts to uh, put in some power, just starting to open a few metres. It was great fun being up the road with Lolly, especially when we got the hang of working together. Look at the power here, Joe. Yeah, this is incredible. Over 400 watts we're seeing on the top left of the screen there. You could see the effort on both riders' faces. We had a pre-race chat with my Tibco Silicon Valley Bank team to go all in for the win and GC, and we pretty much executed our race tactics to perfection. 100 metres to go. It's going to be a, a win for the British rider, Lear Dixon from Tibco Silicon Valley Bank. Manages to distance her teammate, puts nearly 100 metres into up towards the line. But Leah Dixon crosses the line to take the stage. Impressive riding from the Tibco team. Lauren Stevens crosses the line and uh, takes second place. I would absolutely love to um, finish the race with overall victory of the women's tour. It landed a great race for the team, uh, so we'll be looking forward to tomorrow. It looks like this, Leah Dixon takes over at the top ahead of her teammate Lauren Stevens. Lizzie Holden in third, Kristen Faulkner ahead of Lizzie Banks, Krista Dobell Hickok, Eileen Gardner, Sarah Story, Danny Christmas drops to ninth, and Katie Scott of Camstafosi in tenth place. Hello and a welcome to the third and final stage of the Skoda V Women's Tour. What a race it has been. A great replay of yesterday's hilltop finish to Burton Dasset Country Park. And if virtual racing couldn't get any harder, Joanna Rousel, we're going to finish with a criterium around Canary Wharf. Yes, yesterday was epic. It was a brutal stage three times at that climb. And the first time we've really seen team strategy unfold in this virtual race. So brilliant event to watch, but completely different course today. So really intrigued how this is going to unfold, to be honest. But it was quite interesting to hear what Leah Dixon was saying there about how they managed to work out within the game, how to actually work together. Yeah, I think for a lot of riders, it's quite a steep learning curve. They will have been preparing to race on the road this summer and obviously all change across the globe. But um, some quick learning in the first two stages of this race and some brilliant tactics yesterday. So, so without further ado, let's go over and hear from the, the Tipco family um, all uh, getting ready for today's stage. I'm going to come to Leah Dixon uh, first. Leah, great stage victory yesterday. You are now the, the leader of the Skoda V Women's Tour. How are you feeling going into a, a criterium stage? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased to be leading the stage. Um, yesterday was a great race for us, but... Um, Obviously, today is a completely different course, a different style of racing, um, but really excited to get stuck in and hopefully defend the jersey for the team. Hello, Lauren. Brilliant riding yesterday by you and your team. It looked brutally hard. How are the legs feeling today and how have you been recovering overnight? Yeah, I'm feeling much better than I expected uh, this morning. <laughs> it's only uh, 12 o'clock, well, 1 o'clock here in the afternoon. Oh, brilliant. So are you going to have similar tactics today to be attacking or is it going to be more defensive? Uh, we're looking to keep the jersey and hoping for the win also. Excellent. Thank you. Kristen, I'm going to come to you. Just narrowly missing out on a queen clean sweep of the of the podium yesterday. You, you must have been watching Lizzie Holden coming up that final climb to try and uh, take that one. But it was it was a great team ride, wasn't it? Oh, it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, watching my teammates go and make the break and hold it was really inspiring for me. And uh, I think now, you know, that we didn't sweep the podium, I have a little bit to go after today. So really excited for the race ahead. Well, we wish you all the best today. It's a very US kind of criteria today. So good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Rachel. You obviously had a fantastic day yesterday with the team. Um, how have you kept the girls motivated going to this stage? Completely different course. So is it going to be different tactics or similar? 
It, yeah, it's a it's a very different course, and uh, keeping them motivated is is not hard at all. I mean, it's a you know the women's tour is a huge race, and the virtual version of it is the one of the biggest races that we've we've done yet. So they're all really motivated and fired up for another good day today. Excellent. So hopefully you're buzzing and wishing you lots of luck for the race this evening. Great. Thanks, Thank Rachel. You. We're going to go down to the start line and you can see the Tibco Silicon Valley Bank team. So Leah Dixon, Lauren Stevens, Kristen Faulkner. What a great uh, ride they have done. There's your start line. So you're watching out for Leah Dixon there in our virtual Skoda V Women's Tour leaders jersey. That green jersey with the black on that is you're going to be uh, watching out for that within the race today. She's going to have to be super vigilant, isn't she, Joe? Because it's about a 22-second gap to her teammate. Everyone's in the pain caves getting going here. But as we saw yesterday, anything can happen when you get out onto the virtual roads. Yes, exactly. The racing has been extremely tough, uh, a steep learning curve for a lot of the riders. Uh, relatively small time gaps after the first two stages. Uh, Lizzie Holden riding particularly well yesterday. So I'm thinking she's going to um, have her work cut out today, but really try and take that lead as well. And in terms of, I'm thinking today that the Canary Wharf circuit has got four corners. It's one kilometre. It could suit a lot of the Americans. Yes, um, so it's a bit, I guess it's a bit of an American style crit uh, where we see probably slightly wider rows, slightly faster corners, but, but the real road software from RGT um, should be sort of really representative of what that will be like in real life. So you won't be able to keep putting the power down or it won't register as you go through those corners. So it'll be quite an interesting experience for, the lot, for a lot of the riders, but hopefully a very realistic crit experience, so as realistic as you can get on a turbo trainer. Yeah, it's been pretty brutal so far. We're going to go and catch up with some of our riders today. I'm going to go d jump in straight away with Louise Gibson from the uh, Skoda DSi Academy. Louise, uh, take us through. I've, I've been keeping track of you on social media. You were saying yesterday, getting on the pain train. Uh, how are you feeling uh, so far and, and looking ahead to today's stage? Very exciting. It's a seriously new experience for me. So it's amazing to have this opportunity. It's just been full gas the whole time, so I'm just going to shoot out, see how long I can hang on for and enjoy it. <laughs> well, good luck. We wish you all the best tonight. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. You've been rising brilliantly so far this race. It's been excellent to see. It's been brutal, though. How are the legs feeling now and how are you managing to recover after these late, intense races? Well, the legs are pretty good, actually. I think I'm quite used to not getting a uh, massage, recovery massage and being quite busy. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. I think being able to sort of work from home means that you've got all your home comforts. You've got your own loo, you've got your own bed. So, yeah, it's been great. I'm looking forward to tonight. Excellent. Good luck this evening. Good luck to your team. I'm going to go over to Britt Canavan from Team Next G. I'll get that right tonight. Apologies to the team. Britt, um, you've, got, you've got everyone together. You're a, the whole team racing together tonight. You've got, a, you've got a fan club there as well. I don't... Lucy... Um, you're a former Tour Series uh, winner. This has got to be your kind of night tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, normally on the road, this would definitely be my type of course. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how it'll go today. It's more flat, so I hope that I can be up there. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if I can contest the sprint or not. All the best tonight, right? We'll let you concentrate on the start. We are just 20 seconds away from the start of stage three here of the Skoda V Women's Tour. Thanks for joining us. 35 laps of a one kilometer circuit. The general classification, Leah Dixon sitting at the top ahead of her teammate with Lizzie Holden in third. The countdown is starting. Watch the start. Away we go. You can see everyone getting straight into it. Uh, Joe, this is going to be quite interesting from a, 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 a bunch perspective. One kilometer circuit. There's going to be sprints out of every single corner. 
Yes, I'm really intrigued how the software will make this work and make this realistic like a crit. So normally in a crit, it, it's easier, far easier when you're up towards the front of the bunch because you have to sprint so hard out of those corners to stay with the riders in front. You're better off being towards the front of the group, carrying your speed around the corners and not having to accelerate quite so hard out of each turn. So it'll be interesting how the smart trainers react to that and how the riders are able to sort of apply power around this course. Pretty much, pretty much a pan flat course just a couple of meters climbing per lap so so very little in the way of hills but probably quite a lot of repeated accelerations and repeated intervals for these riders tonight danny christmas winner of stage one getting up there great to see alicia maria zufi the italian cyclocross star alicia maria zufi um she rides for the biscay durango team during the season on the road you can see her in that pink and blue jersey uh, joe tindley from cams to fosi getting up there joe tindley is a great criterium rider she was up there second last year from uh, from memory at the birkenhead uh, tour series event behind uh, now teammate Re rebecca durrell uh, Joe Tinley, this could suit her. Again, you can see the American flags uh, getting up there. Those rally cycling jerseys, those orange jerseys coming up towards the front. Heidi Franz um, getting up there. Is uh, Leanne Ganza had a bit of a mechanical on the uh, the start line uh, yesterday, so making sure that they get through to the front. Our uh, overall leader, Leah Dixon, is uh, making sure that she keeps herself up towards the front and she hits the front of this uh, group. So quite clearly, we can see Joe that again yesterday. I think you, riders were saying afterwards, you've got to watch the splits. Um, and I think it almost looked like Danny Christmas got caught on the wrong side of a split yesterday. So Team Tibco, Leah Dixon got to be super vigilant. They've got to watch out those names. Lizzie Holden, who sits in third place at 23 seconds, because you'd look at the end of a stage race normally and you think 20 odd seconds. No one's going to close that on our criterion. But this is such an unknown quantity, isn't it? it on a on a virtual crit. Yes, exactly. Very much an unknown quantity. And I think also the difficulty when you're racing virtually, um, you know, depending on the sort of size screen you're looking at, you know, you might be squinting down at a sort of a, a small tablet or even a phone and trying to trying to see where you are in the virtual peloton. And you might think you're on a wheel only to then find that, th that those wheels are out the back of the group. So it could be incredibly difficult to stay as vigilant as you need to be without the sort of usual flow of the sort of eb ebbs and flows of a bunch that you would get in real life. Um, and we're already seeing gaps opening up here we're already seeing some some big watts per kilo on the on the left of the screen so the riders riding very hard from the start again we've seen this in the first two stages full gas from the off uh, a very intense less than an hour's worth of racing so um, a lot of riders will have learned a lot very quickly in the first two days and hopefully able to adapt today so Lizzie Banks is, is up there. Megan Dickerson from the Skoda DSi Academy. She's had a phenomenal week as uh, Meg Dickerson over the last three days. And again, unlike a lot of other riders in this race, someone like Meg, who's riding for that Development Academy, also works full time as well. Corin Hall just uh, out of the saddle there. Uh, Lizzie Holden moving up. Taylor Wiles is uh, also there. I think uh, we looks like potentially here, just getting a message, looks like uh, Dame Sarah Story might have had a virtual mechanical uh, on the start line, which is a big shame for her. They're trying to uh, chase to get back in here here's some of our chasing groups that are just getting uh, clipped off the back there so katie scott we're seeing that Mike Kroger now uh, comes up towards the, the front of the group for high-tech product. Mike is, uh, she is a phenomenal talent, a great track rider, Joe, great time trialist as well. The, the sort of power monster that you, that you've, uh, you've phrased that you've coined this week. This is absolutely uh, right up Mike Kroger's street, this one. Yeah, definitely. So Mika Kruger, probably best known as a time chartless, but definitely over the last couple of seasons, really establishing herself well in road races and as a serious GC contender in stage races. So it'll be interesting to see what she can do on this course. Uh, again, very different to the first two stages. So you know, this could completely shake up the GC once again. And I think this is what's been the beauty this week is being seeing our riders working because we've got the in the game. You can see them working within that, but it doesn't quite paint the picture, does it, of just what sort of effort they're having to make. Eileen Gardner on the left, you picture in the red and uh, yellow there of Cam's Tafosi, Lizzie Banks on the right. And I think 
Joe, each time we've gone back and, and sort of seen a rider's webcam and, and it's been really good to be able to compare their data on the screen to their little avatar within the game to how they're sitting and how they're looking on the turbo trainer. Yeah, definitely. You can tell a huge amount by how hard a rider is working, by not just their facial expression, but sort of how steady they are on their bike, whether they're core strong, whether they're sort of rocking about or not. And that's something the other riders in the race obviously can't see. They can't interpret that body language from their competitors. But but we're lucky enough to see a few glimpses on our screens of how hard everybody is working. And it, and it is very telling. I think Kristin Faulkner yesterday of Team Tipco, who we're just seeing on the front at the moment, I thought she looked very, very in control. She was in that chasing group. Group, didn't really seem to be to be too stressed there which I thought was very impressive just getting a shot there Laura van Regen Mortal from the uh, the Bela Crush pro cycling team great story that she's got she uh, and anyone that's watching that's thinking, do you know what I'm gonna get into bike racing and I want to I want to have a go whatever age you are and I was watching an interview with Laura and she said the first race that she rode when she was a youngster she went out she's on a mountain bike with mud guards and uh, a luggage rack she called it on there as well she went out on her first race and won uh, her first race that she ever competed in as a youngster and I think that's what you've got to kind of take away and get it as you if you want to get into bike racing isn't it Joe that it doesn't matter uh, what bike you've got you've just got to get in there get that confidence and uh, and get out there and race yeah just get stuck in so ex experience is brilliant try all different types of cycling my first ever bike race was actually a bmx race um i, I haven't been back to the bmx track to compete <laughs> again it definitely wasn't my forte but yeah bmx race was my first ever event i've raced mountain bike i've raced cyclocross i've raced road racing time trialing and then track was my main discipline at the olympics but um i think i've, e I've even tried some cycle speedway to be perfectly honest so uh, different disciplines try out anything and yeah just get stuck in and just enjoy Enjoy riding your bike you develop so many skills by just being out there in bike races whatever kind of races they are Amelia Sharp hits the front 30.6 kilometers go already you can see we've covered uh, coming up on uh, six kilometers 29 meters that we've climbed so far Laura van Regen more to come through Meg Dickerson really holding strong at the front Marissa Bax Britt Carnarvon from Next G she's having a great start uh, Katie Hall the American we're also seeing uh, her name uh, pop up there as well Lizzie Holden hasn't got the full support crew with her tonight uh lizzie holden apparently she was at ashley mormon patio's house last night that's why they had the uh the full support crew so hopefully that doesn't uh affect her too much leah dixon though joe is having a great start very very uh, much to the to the front of this race yeah, I think that's going to be key on this sort of circuit to keep herself up the front, keep herself out of trouble. Um, we've got her teammate there on the front as well, Kristen Faulkner of, of Team Tipco. So the, the team are riding really well. They've obviously got Rachel Hederman as their DS, who's extremely experienced, will know all about how to ride a good crit. And I think the same as in real life, positioning is going to be key, not getting caught out, not getting caught behind riders who might be getting dropped. And probably initially, uh, they're probably going to be running a little bit defensively and seeing seeing how it unfolds on this course because it is quite an unknown to a lot of riders riding a, a, riding a virtual crit. But already looking at this bunch, it does already look vastly thinned. And we could just see Danny Christmas there, 26th place currently in this group, just trying to move her way past a couple of riders, get in contact with the back of this main group at the front now. So as we said at the, uh, the top of our show, if virtual racing couldn't get any tougher, we're finishing with a uh, virtual criterium around the streets of uh, Canary Wharf. So if you're, if you're out there Friday night, normally Canary Wharf on a Friday night would be a buzz of activity. Everyone pouring out of the offices into the, into the wine bars and uh, everything around uh, London. So if you're there and you're watching us, you're tuning in, pour yourself a gin and tonic and uh, enjoy the racing along the, uh, the sides of the track here. Turn to Bikus, Katie Hall, Taylor Wiles. As I said, a, a little bit earlier on, the, the criteriums that they have in America, Joe, um, are very similar to the, the roads normally are about twice as wide on a lot of them, but clearly from the off here, this is definitely suiting the Americans. And it's great to see a climber like Katie Hall getting up here. 
Yeah, definitely. So I've never actually raced in America myself, but it's somewhere that I always wanted to go. I heard a lot of good things about it, a lot of stage racing and a lot, a lot of crits. So these riders should, should sort of be well suited to this race. Uh, con contrast that to Europe, where we see a lot of very narrow roads, a lot of, a lot of street furniture, very, very technical racing. So can be very difficult. Having said that, I've rid ridden some crits in Holland that are absolutely full gas, like any other crit, yet they're 60 kilometers long. So pretty much an hour and a half of full gas racing. So um, a lot of these runners will sort of be sort of well, well accustomed to this sort of really intense, relatively short races with a lot of accelerating out of the corners. Great to see a shot there of Marissa Banks. Uh, Marissa Bax, my apologies. She uh, raced very well on the uh, the opening day for Bela Crush and uh, talented rider, just 21 from the Netherlands. As Joe said, the, uh, the Dutch criteriums. Are, uh, are a tough affair had a great season last year did marissa took the uh, scandis gp up in Uppsala in sweden this group's uh, very much thinning out here we're still seeing those uh, cams tofosi jerseys that uh, are in there we're looking out for our uh, young rider eileen gardner who sits in fifth overall at 46 seconds but danny christmas from Lotto Sudal comes through, makes a little move, immediately answered uh, by the next G uh, jerseys. Britt Carnarvon comes up. Uh, so he uh, couldn't quite hear her in her interview, which was a bit of a shame. Um, but they've uh, they're all together this evening. The team racing. They've got their uh, their support network as well. So we are just coming up on seven kilometers covered inside 30 kilometers uh, to go. We're going to check in with Rally's uh, director sportif, uh, Zach Bell. Welcome, uh, Zach. Uh, thanks for joining us. I was just saying earlier, a little bit earlier on that this sort of criterium, even though it's a virtual one, um, would very much suit the uh, the American riders. It's quite similar to the crits you have over there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's going to be a lot of punchy efforts, like you guys were mentioning, and I think it's uh, it's a, a, a nice change for for us coming to come to the platform to have something that might feel a little more familiar, for sure. What on what a lot of the riders kind of came up on, for sure. How's you? What's you um, feeling been so far of the of the virtual tour? Do you think this style of racing is essential at the moment for keeping our uh, our community together? But do you think? This style of racing could be could be here to stay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's essential to, to the sport that we continue to engage different people, and you know, I think this this kind of uh, platform really allows people who may not feel uh, as comfortable in, in on road situations right away uh, to really build a community and get excited about the crossover from our teams and 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 uh, the other venues in the sport. So uh, I'm really glad that uh, this positive has kind of come out of the situation that we're in and, and our team is, is definitely uh, learning the platform as quickly as we can so that we can, we can have an impact. And we've seen how, we can see how intense it is here. How have the riders been feeling post stage, um, especially Dame Sarah Story was saying uh, at the top of our program, not being able to get, maybe not being able to get a massage uh, and having to deal with that recovery at home, whereas normally they'd have the, the full support of the, the team to help them recover afterwards. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for, for our team in particular, we've, we've been in a not bad situation because the start times and, and things for us in North America are, are um, quite reasonable. So um, a lot of our riders have actually been able to, to use this as a start to their training in the day and then and then tag on the other activities that they need, whether it be additional time on the bike or um, those recovery activities you're alluding to. So, uh, but, you know, that's the one thing about this, this platform that's difficult is, is everybody is in different time zones and you're really dealing with uh, different sets of variables. So that's, that's something everybody's learning, I think. Great, thanks, Zach. We'll try and check in with you a little bit later on. Zach Bell, there, the director sportif of Rally Cycling, Anna Doherty has uh, got herself up towards the front. Emily Meekin, Yip Van den Bos from Ball Dolmans. Good to see uh, Yip getting up there. Krista Dobel Hickok from the Rally Cycling team is also uh, in the uh, towards the front of the group. Lucy Gad from Story Racing. We saw her on our uh, pictures uh, moments ago. 
as the uh, riders in those green jerseys we're going to check in with uh, Adam Blythe Megan Dickerson we can see uh, on the left Adam thanks thanks for joining us uh, you've got to be super happy with the uh, with the way the team has been riding uh, this week Megan Dickerson Rebecca Richards have been up there really uh, fighting it out for these stages yeah I think they've all done fantastically I think the main thing for all of them is just have confidence when they go back into racing when they get on the road again they'll have more of a feel for for how good these girls can really do so for me it's just to get a good measure for them and to have confidence in themselves going into the next race and then of course they've all done so brilliantly as well this week it's been great to see and as a director sportif how much advice have you been able to give them going into especially something like this i mean you were a great bunch sprinter you're only recently out of the of the peloton what sort of advice and tactics are you being able to to pass on to them it's very difficult i think in these situations i think the main thing is just to not kill yourself too soon i think stay within your limits never go into the red until it's the final two minutes of the race but apart from that just try and stay relaxed as you can and don't do something silly almost i know it sounds very easy to do but we can see meg on the front now we just told her just follow the wheels today and you know see how it goes in the final there but i think the only advice you can really give them is is just ride within yourself and don't worry about what others are doing too much Okay, thanks for joining us. We'll uh, we'll dive back into the racing. So we've got a bit of a group forming now. It's uh, thinning out uh, even more. Leah Dixon is on the front. Lauren Stevens is uh, up there. It just clicks through quite quickly. So we're uh, we'll get a good idea of uh, everyone in this leading group. Megan Barker, uh, Marissa Bax is also in there. Lizzie Holden. Uh, we can see who's uh, in there, just uh, over 12 uh, kilometres of racing covered. We've got 23.8 kilometres to go. Britt Carnarvon is also uh, in this uh, front group as we go through the tunnel. Uh, Joe, this is really, really looking uh, tough at the front now. Yeah, I think we've probably got about half the number of riders in this group is what we started with, uh, maybe even less than that. Seeing Emily Meekin on the front at the moment for the Drops team. So she's a new signing to the Drops squad uh, for 2020. So it's nice to see her be able to make, make her mark on this race. Uh, probably best known for being a really strong time trialist. So uh, another one of the power monsters we've been talking about that will be looking to get stuck in on this sort of stage. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, there's the Tipco jersey. There's Lizzie Holden in the pink and light blue colours. Um, still working in this group. Uh, Anna Doherty is uh, the 10th rider. Lucy Gadd is still in here for uh, story racing. Um, Emma Nasgaard Jorgensen is uh, another rider. Then we could talk from Bigler Katusha. Uh, fast sprinter is uh, Emma Norgard uh, Jorgensen. Uh, Joe, she's still sitting in 10th overall as well yeah she's someone that i've sort of highlighted as a potential for today's stage i've got a few people highlighted to be perfectly honest <laughs> um but but she's a name that i did sort of think perhaps we could see something something interesting from her at the finish here um has already had a win to her name uh, down at the valencia tour earlier this year so a good start to the season um but obviously part of a very strong big look Atusha team as well and i know lizzie banks has got her eyes on trying to get herself on the podium so we'll see what they can do between the two of them it's going to be interesting. Uh, there's your uh, Lotto Sudal jerseys. Megan Barker is uh, another rider that we can uh, watch out for uh, in this group. So the Great Britain jersey, the Great Britain national team jersey. And, and Megan's another rider, um, Joe, who really excels, you would say, in the, the Tour Series, which is the Criterion race. We've used Canary Wharf um, in, in the past, but... She won a couple of rounds of Redditch and Motherwell a, a couple of years ago. She's a, a phenomenal track rider, isn't she, Megan? So it's, it's good to see her getting in on the mix today. Yeah, definitely. So most of these young British riders have sort of grown up on a di on a diet of, of crit racing, of town centre racing. So very well accustomed to these sort of efforts. And also, like you say, really strong track rider, part of the GB setup, training for, for Team Pursuit, Madison, Omnium, all those Olympic events. Younger sister of Eleanor Barker, of course, my teammate from Rio. So Meg will be sort of really trying to break into that team. And, and these short events with these sort of repeated accelerations are, are really quite similar to the sort of efforts you'll be doing on the track. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how she can how she can fare in the finish of this race so with emily meekin on the front of the peloton we're going to check in with frankie hall the director sporty from uh, drops uh, frankie thanks thanks for joining us 
Um, we were just we were just talking uh, about Emily. She's had a, a phenomenal um, race so far. How's the t- how's the team been overall? Yeah, it's um it's been really good, and it's been really actually really good to see both April and Emily in this because they've both had some really bad injuries that kind of ruined the beginning of their season. Emily had a broken collarbone, and April had a really nasty um broken knee. So they've been really contained to the turbo uh, for the most part of the season and as we know Joss is just an absolute powerhouse so the three of them together they're really absolutely smashing it and um, yeah having never raced virtually before they're they're doing really really well and uh, hopefully I think they're enjoying it as well although their faces (laughs) at the moment don't say so much. (laughs) And in terms of the of this virtual racing is is it helping them get their heads around getting back into racing as the world comes out of lockdown and we start to see the the emergence of of the program is it helping them get their head back in the game a little bit yeah for sure it's um there's obviously been a huge gap and a a definite uncertainty with if and when racing is going to return this season and i mean there's the beginnings of a program coming together but it we still don't know what's going to happen. So this is tidying them over. They're three very, as with the rest of the team as well, very motivated athletes. So they'd get on with training regardless of when they're going to be able to race again. But this is definitely getting them more motivated and keeping that excitement there during the middle of the season. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll let you get back to directing the team. The race really hotting up here. Lucy Gad is on the the front here. Uh, So this uh, leading group still in there. We can see Uh, So April Tasty comes through. Megan Dickerson from uh, the Skoda Academy through towards the front. Joe Tindley is a couple of hundred metres down there. We're just seeing a few other riders on the group. Uh, April Tasty, those orange rally jerseys uh, up towards the front. We're almost 15 kilometres into the race. If you're just uh, joining us, welcome aboard the third and final stage of the Skoda V Women's Tour this evening from Canary Wharf in London. You can see racing around the streets of London in a virtual criterium. Britt Carnarvon from uh, Next G. Danny Christmas, the winner of stage one. She uh, lost that leader's jersey to Leah Dixon yesterday. Could she top and tail this race, Joe, with uh, with two stage victories? It's interesting you mentioned Danny Christmas because I've been watching on the graphics on the side and her name keeps being up there, keeps being in that sort of top four rider. She's been keeping herself well at the front of this group. I think she had some small problems yesterday but rode really well for the second half of that stage to minimise her losses. And we know how motivated she is. She was absolutely buzzing after that victory on stage one. And I think what's been really key for, for any of the racing at the moment virtually is how motivated these riders are. It's been such a strange season everything's been thrown up in the air globally but it's these riders that have been able to to maintain focus to to embrace that pain cave and to sort of really enjoy their turbo training and Danny Christmas has really sort of come across to me as a rider that has embraced that and is really keen to impress potential for today but like I say I've got got quite a few names highlighted here (laughs) Lucy Vanderhaar another one we saw her name uh, just from that overhead shot as well Joe just as as we get into the uh, the race here as we take this left hand corner anyone that's been tuning in over the the course of the last three days that's got that they're super motivated now that wants to get into into bike racing whether it's virtually here on one of the platforms or actually once racing starts again or just start enjoying riding the bike three three simple bits of advice to anyone that wants to improve their riding what's the best three bits they could do yeah, I'd say, first of all, look look for a cycling club to join. Um, I know some club activities are able to start up soonish, I think. I won't, I won't quote on the exact dates and the exact sort of numbers riders can get together. But first of all, look up a club. Um, look up safe routes in your area. Um, I just use really quite easily on Google Maps. There's a cycling layer you can put on, which will highlight the either cycle paths or, or quieter roads for cycling on. In, in your area so that's a really sort of easy way to find good cycling routes um, and like I said before try out different types of cycling when I first started cycling I didn't really know much about road racing or track or track cycling and I sort of always envisaged I do mountain biking turned out that really wasn't my forte whatsoever so very glad I tried the different cycling disciplines 
let's run you through some of our riders at the front so it changes as you can see quite quickly lauren dixon uh, is uh, up towards uh, the front you found and boss brick carnarvon's uh, still in there chris newton is uh, joining us the man of the direct sportive of the great britain team chris and uh, we uh, looks like we could see megan barker that's in this uh, front group how have the team coped with the the three days of the virtual tour Oh, they've coped really well. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, in in, a, in this situation, uh, the race and they've, they've looked forward to. They've carried on training, so <clears throat> um, they've, they've looked forward to this, and uh, I think they've adapted pretty well. And as yourself and, and Joanna have said, you know, adapting to this platform of racing and, and the styles. You know, Meg was on the on the phone last night saying she was sat behind someone that got dropped and she couldn't get round. So. It, it's learning the, the the tips and the tricks and the tactics very much like uh, just being out on the road, really. And does it help with the 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 for the Great Britain riders? Does it does the track background help in this sort of racing? Well, I think it just complements the uh, the turbo training element of tra of you know the preparation that we do anyway. And, and again, as 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 Joe pointed out, <clears throat> it, it's quite an integral part. Of our kind of preparation for track so it, it does complement it and uh, you know this kind of format does just raise the interest even more and, and gives a, a little bit more meaning to the, the sessions well thanks for joining us we'll uh, we look forward to seeing how the team uh, do at the finish chris newton there the uh, direct sportif of the great britain uh, national team our uh, skoda vitor women's jersey is uh, still very much the front that light green white and black jersey you can see there of leah dixon really holding her position strongly towards the front noticeable joe as well as the th other three cams to fosi jerseys in this group of uh, uh, joe tinley uh, um, Eileen Gardner and, and Katie Scott. Yeah, so quite easy to pick out the sort of yellow and red of the Cam Safosi jersey. I'm actually wondering at the moment, looking at this group, whether we've got some lapped riders in here. It's actually a little bit hard to tell, but we are having some riders on the left of the screen showing as, as plus two kilometres. So that could be a case that we have a couple of lap riders in here. Yeah, well, uh, this happens in criteriums, doesn't it? Um, when you, when riders, riders get lapped and sometimes try and... Uh, hide out in the group and pretend you haven't been lapped yeah ever so tempting to do and, and of course in, in a real life print as well you can normally have a lap out if you have a, a mechanical or a puncher or something but i don't think that's really going to be the case virtually today no you can, uh, virtual laps out and uh, so welcome the krista dobo hiccup the rally team so we're this leading group really is uh, looking quite a select number of riders Britt carnarvon who we uh, spoke to before her teammate Rose Amalan um, is also there. He's up there. The two next G riders are on the front. So uh, the Dutch riders, Yip van den Bos uh, from Bull Dolman, super talented rider is Yip van den Bos. Lauren Stevens, uh, the American flags are great to see uh, the different nations. Britt Klaven, the Belgian rider who's got to have designs on the Paris Bay Classic, the inaugural uh, women's Paris Bay at the end of the season. Her dad, of course, of Ace One Paris Bay. That's always been her ambition to take that race now she's going to get her opportunity she's won the youth version of that so a super talented young rider um flying the flag here for uh belgium uh, as riders chase to get onto uh the back of the group and uh, stay with them still team tipco though joe they're very they look very much in control of this they really have adapted uh well to to riding as a team within this within the virtual racing they have and i think yesterday was was the first time that we really saw that sort of team strategy pay off pay off perfectly really first second and fourth on the stage which was hugely impressive but just seeing leah dixon on the screen at the moment and she's been riding superbly always staying at the head of this group and we keep seeing the other names from the tipco team also sort of towards the front of this group so keeping themselves safe keeping themselves out of trouble up there they are indeed Anna Doherty uh, also in there as well. So the uh, jerseys moving through on these uh, corners, swinging left. 
Uh, great to uh, see so many riders. You can see how hard Brick Knarven is having to work here as our overall leader, our general classification leader, Leah Dixon, comes uh, through towards uh, the front. If you weren't with us at the top of the show, it's uh, 22, just uh, around 22 seconds is the gap on the general classification between Leah Dixon and uh, Kristen Faulkner on the GC. And it's uh, 23 seconds back to third place to rider Lizzie Holden. Then uh, going into the stage, Lizzie Banks was fourth at 24. Eileen Gardner was uh, fifth at 46. Uh, Dame Sarah Story was sixth at 48. Danny Christmas, seventh at 55. Katie Scott was 8th at 157. Corin Hall, 9th at 201. And Emma Nord Norsgaard um, was 10th at 231. So that was the, the way the uh, general classification was looking going into uh, today's stage. Yeah, so not, so except for right at the top, not really any huge gaps there. I think it's going to be quite difficult to to make much of a difference in this race. We're now over halfway through, 22 kilometers covered, and we've seen the bunch thin massively. So a lot of riders have got dropped here, but no real big attempts to get away at the moment. Rose Hogeboom is uh, also in this uh, group from uh, Bila Crush. That's uh, just uh, pretty relentless at the front. Uh, so again, as our uh, so the leader's jersey of Leah Dixon, Moving through, Marissa backs uh, up there. Great to see the Bull Dolman's uh, jerseys. Ava Bjorman is another rider that's in there. So this, the uh, Bull Dolman's jerseys are uh, just popping up. There's our overall leader, Leah Dixon, and uh, really uh, enjoyed her uh, stage victory yesterday. Did Leah Dixon. So uh, riding well here, and you can see the effort of these riders. Um, when we go to their webcams, I think we're pushing the, some of the technology to the limit and really uh, pushing each rider's Wi-Fi to the limit in uh, in terms of them all having their cameras on to be able to see how hard they're working uh, throughout this stage. So 12.8 kilometres to go. We've covered 23 and a half kilometres so far. Again, just starting to lap a few groups here as they go through. But Leah Dixon makes an effort on the front comes through makes a, a little bit of an attack marissa Bax, watch out for her great sprinter is marissa Bax. Uh, kristen faulkner just answers the call on the front of uh, the group it's just a pretty relentless pace isn't it joe the it, it, on a crit circuit such as this uh, a criterium circuit of a kilometer when it's flat like this this is the way that the racing can play out um when you're out there racing through these uh, streets for real, that the pace is so high, no one can get away. Yeah, definitely. So when I race a crit, I'd normally try and focus on getting myself as near to the front as possible on the start line and then just staying there as much as I can. And you'll find the bunch will just keep splitting behind you and riders will keep going out the back as it just as the pace is just so hard. Seeing Leah Dixon here in that Skoda leader's jersey, she's consistently been towards the front of this group and looking good. When we saw the shot of her on the screen, she, she was obviously working hard, but didn't look like she was completely in the red. So very, very impressed with Leah Dixon this week great ride i think we're going to catch up with uh ina teutenberg from uh, trek sega freddy got taylor wiles um on the left of our picture ina thanks thanks for joining us from trek sega freddo how have the how have the team uh, been reacting um to the virtual women's tour <laughs> i think it's been a pretty big uh, learning experience uh, none of these girls have ever done virtual racing so i think we had a lot of technical issues and all that stuff and trying to figure it out and you know, I think um, we for sure have to learn a little bit more to be competitive in virtual racing. Do you think as a, as a platform, though, I mean, it's a great way of we've seen it throughout the last few months around the world. It's been a great way for for teams uh, to connect with their fans, for, for, for riders to ride along with the pros. Um, from a racing point of view, it's it looks like it's kind of starting to establish itself, would you say? <laughs> I'm probably the wrong person to ask you there. I mean, I think it's great for people to connect and do stuff and like, uh, you know, get challenged by others. But I don't know, I'm an outside person. So uh, for me, it's really hard to comprehend on this whole online inside training ride when the sun is shining outside. 
<laughs> and for Trek Sega Freda, we're starting to see the, the 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 makings and the formation of the race program going forward. Uh, uh, the the riders are they stay are they motivated? Are they are they ready to race uh, once we get things going again on the road? Yeah, I think so. I think there was you know at the start there was the insecurity, and then you know nobody knew where the end is, and then you know people went through phases of like being really motivated, then going down and all that. But um, I think now that there's like a date and everything, so the girls have finally like a date where they need to be ready, where they need to focus, have the weeks, they can build up a good training plan with their coaches and um, go from there. So I think that was really important to have now a date for them to see the goal where they're working for again. Well, thanks, Ina. And we've loved having Trek Sega Fredo along with us for over the past uh, three days. Thanks for joining us. We're heading in towards the final 10 kilometers of the final stage here of the Skoda V Women's Tour. Leah Dixon, our overall leader, is defending her virtual leader's jersey perfectly, you would say, here at the moment. Inside 10 kilometers to go, we're about to click through there. Some really talented, fast finishers uh, within this uh, group. Krista Dobell Hickok from the rally cycling team bulls dolmans if you're uh, familiar with the with the teams and the women's pro peloton some of the biggest teams biggest name riders in the world that are uh, racing virtually through the streets of london this evening back to our uh, general classification leader leah dixon she's looking uh, looking strong here joe yeah, she is looking strong. So we're seeing her just sort of get in and out of the saddle here, which which is good, sort of varying her position. But but she looks pretty pretty in control. We're not seeing on her face a com a complete pain face, which is good. We've still got about nine and a half kilometres to go. Uh, we can't quite see her power up. Well, yeah, we can now. Top left of the screen there, sort of sitting around 350, 360 watts. So so pretty high power up. But but we were seeing her yesterday climbing at over 400 watts up that climb to Burton Dasset. Dame Sarah Story was telling me yesterday that she her sort of as we would call it normalized power so again my apologies to if you're new to cycling and some of the power and the the jargon that, that we use there's Alicia Maria Azufi's uh, power that's there as well um Dame Sarah Story was saying her her power for anyone that's familiar with it was 298 watts for the entire stage yesterday and she felt like she'd done basically two attempts at the hour record over the first two stages yeah, that is an incredibly high average power for, for pretty pretty much an hour long race. And like you say, two days back to back, uh, very, very similar to the sort of power output she was she was trying to produce back when she had the, the hour record attempt, which was ooh, possibly back in 2015, maybe. So a few years ago now. But yeah, huge power output for Sarah's story there. Um, over the past couple of days, Lizzie Banks also put some training data on her on her Instagram page, and we saw similar similarly huge numbers as well. So these riders are working very very hard. They are indeed. Joss Loudon was posting a little bit earlier on as well that she had uh, about her uh, virtual mechanical that she has. It uh, it does happen from uh, time to time. As we head in towards the uh, the final eight laps of today's race, it looks uh, very much like a bit of a bunch sprint here unless anyone has the uh, the extra power to try and get away over the course of these final laps uh, Leah Dixon uh, again on the, the front of the group Kristen Faulkner moves through it does change quite quickly doesn't it Joe in terms of trying to keep track of this uh, of this leading group yeah it, it does change quite quickly I think that's sort of a bit um, of what Chris Newton was saying earlier that for the riders it is a steep learning curve and that they're learning how best to use this platform how best to race on this platform move around riders get themselves where they want to be because it is different to real life and it is it is new to the most of the riders here so I think we're all learning quite a lot very quickly and that's been interesting each day seeing different riders up there as they adapt to this style of racing. Lauren Stevens on your screen she was the rider really yesterday wasn't she the first time up the climb to Burton Dassett that really uh, splintered the group under the pressure of her first attack yeah she was so she looked incredibly strong up that climb it was her that went away first and it was her teammate Leah Dixon which closed the gap and there was 
both of the riders from Team Tipco away for the rest of the stage, which, which is brilliant to see the two teammates together, both of them climbing extremely well. It'll be interesting whether they're able to sort of replicate any of that teamwork on this stage, which of course is completely different and I think far more far more favouring the sprinters, but they do have Leah Dixon nicely at the top of the GC with a little bit of little bit of room to play with, so no need to panic by any means. Not at all. Uh, just uh, looking around the group, Kathleen Holworth is also still in there. So next G, I've got plenty of representatives in this uh, leading group. This is going to be the next thing, isn't it, Joe, as we go through and get used to virtual racing. You've seen Corin Hall is the story racing rider in there. It's going to be interesting over the, over the as we establish virtual racing to see if we start to get lead outs. Yeah, exactly. I think that's an interesting one. I think Sarah's story said in one of her one of her interviews that it is very difficult to work as a team on a virtual platform. Um, but however, not not impossible. And I think as riders get more used to these platforms, of course, lead outs are, are a crucial part of bike racing out on the road. And a lot of riders make their living out of being being a really good lead out rider. So there's absolutely no reason why it, it can't play a part in this in, in that sense. But uh, probably still a lot of learning to do to really make that happen effectively. They are indeed. Uh, Ros Armelan on the front. Marissa backs. So what though? Britt Carbon has not been far away from the front so far this evening. Next year, really throwing everything at this stage uh, tonight they're quite they're a very interesting team it's great to see isn't it development teams as we go through that that finish line uh there the development teams they're an under 23 uh uci uh, women's team and it they, it's great to see this this sort of team now forming to develop the the next generation of riders yeah, definitely. I think it can be a big jump uh, as, as a racer to go from the junior category to the elite women's category. We don't really have an established under 23 women's category in the same way that the men do. So I think for a lot of junior riders, having a team that is dedicated to under 23 development um, can, can be really important. And we've got we've got a similar sort of setup uh, in the GB squad as well. We've got two Great Britain teams here, the Great Britain team and, and the Breeze team as well. So it's nice to have development teams working hard to develop that under 23 sort of age group when we don't have that same separate racing that that men have we're going to go over and catch up with stefan van klink from uh the Bela crush pro cycling team stefan thanks thanks for joining us gotta say so impressed with the team so far this week how what's their reaction been after the stages how have they found it Hello, Mark. Yeah, uh, thank you. We're uh, very happy with how everything's going. I think yesterday, uh, yeah, we had some uh, some issues. It was not the best day, but uh, the first day went uh, went really well with uh, two riders in the first group. And also today, we're uh, yeah pretty satisfied with uh, with where we are at at the moment. Uh, it's a small group, still two riders in there. So uh, let's see how it plays out. And in terms of uh, team tactics coming in over the course, as we learn more about virtual racing are they finding that they can start to put team tactics into play as or maybe on, on more of the flatter stages like this yeah uh, i gotta say um with the experience that we have on uh virtual racing uh playing out good team tactics it's pretty hard uh but of course we try i go we have we have two rides there and uh we know that uh, marissa is a very good sprinter so uh, I'm sure the girls will try to work together uh, to make it a good sprint finish today. Well, thanks for joining us, Stefan. We'll get, let you get back to watching the race. We are inside five kilometres to go here on the third and final stage here of the Skoda V Women's Talk. We are in Canary Wharf. It's a Friday night. We are in uh, London. 35 laps of a one kilometre circuit. It's uh, all setting up for the finish. Joe, we've talked quite a lot about Corin Hall um, this week. Great, great track rider, great criterion rider. Story racing. We're talking a lot about just how well Corin was going coming in, into this one. Um, she could be a good bet. She had a good finish up at Burton Dassett yesterday as well, just outside the top ten. Yeah, she did. So, so Kareen Hall, part of the Great Britain paracycling team, would have been training for the Paralympics this summer. Of course, postponed by a year now, but 2020 was was going to be a huge a huge year for her on the tandem. And it's great that she's been able to sort of transfer that form 
into the virtual world of racing and we've seen her really get stuck into these races and she's part of a strong team in story racing and she has been, she's been up there each day and really trying to sort of sort of show herself and i do think this sort of length of racing really suits her I'm just getting a message as well that uh, we have got some lapped riders in this leading group so we're uh, we're going to try and uh, we'll work out and try and pick them out um, of that uh, leading group so um, just getting a, a little bit of a message so there's probably we're being told just 10 riders that are all on the uh, the same lap here so we'll uh, we'll do our best to just pick them all out the names that uh, do pop up that are still within that uh, leading group Group. Kristen Faulkner we know has been there from the start, Leah Dixon, uh, Britt Carnarvon, Emma Norsgaard uh, all within uh, that group so we'll uh, we'll try and get you an update on uh, just uh, which riders with three just over three kilometres to go are still on the same lap but uh, for me Joe um, I think that we've got to watch the likes of uh, Marissa Bax here she had a great uh, opening sprint on the the first day we just heard from the the director sportif there um, but this uh, this Tibco team Leah Dixon could potentially she want to try and take this one with a potentially with a with a final uh, burst of line a finishing sprint and a stage win if she can yeah, I think I'm probably going to go for Emma Norsgaard from Big Look Atusha. She's been she's been up there in this group all day. I keep seeing her at the front of the group now, as as I say that uh, the Danish flag you can see on the left of the screen. Um, so I think she's been riding well. We know she's a strong sprinter. So so that's the rider I'm going I'm going to go for. Yeah, see what happens. Okay, right. So looking at the group and looking at uh, how they are so far in this race. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Marissa Bax. I think in this one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go uh, with the Beela Cross Rider. She's been looking good so far, and there she is, your uh, leader of the general classification, Leah Dixon, at the top of your screen. You've got Kristen Faulkner second on the general classification, 22 seconds behind her teammate, and then Marissa Bax at the bottom, who has been really well placed uh, throughout uh, this race so far. So uh, if you weren't with us uh, on the opening day, it was Danny Christmas that took the stage there. Leah Dixon taking it yesterday, but two kilometres to go in towards the finish. Britt Carnarvon still well up there in this one. Uh, got uh, Christina Holworth is uh, also up towards the front. Kathleen Holworth, my apology, from uh, Next G, those green jerseys from B, B La Croche, very much uh, to the front of the group we've got the great britain jersey uh, within this uh, leading group as well i think it's anna doherty that's still represented in this leading group for great britain Kristen Faulkner on the front. Joe's pick for the day, Emma Norsgaard. Uh, just dropping back down through the group just a little bit. We are going, getting towards the final uh, kilometre and a half here of stage three of the virtual women's tour. And our sprinters lining themselves up now for the final lap and the final sprint. Joe Tindley comes up here from uh, Cams to Fossi. so the power up for uh, the final uh, lap the final kilometer of this one Leah Dixon hits the front that's a uh, Great Britain jersey there towards the front as well Yip van den Bos can't discount Yip van den Bos here either uh, Joe from Bull Dolmans no you can't we've seen quite a few different riders at the head of this group today just as we go through a lap to go uh, definitely suited different riders here so very much all to play for last 1000 meters of racing now so there's a few riders here uh, of course in a criterion we would uh, normally have lapped the, the lap riders normally get pulled out with a few laps to go lauren stevens hits the front emma norsgaard comes through the danish flag up towards the front Britt carnarvon moves into a, a good uh, position kathleen holworth is a good sprinter as well from uh, team next g uh, 600 meters now in towards the finish lauren stevens battling to hold her position at the front good to see the drops jerseys uh, within the front of this group as well Britt carnarvon maneuvers her way through towards the front leah dixon is defending uh, that position at the front 
of the race. 400 metres to go now, swinging through the final virtual corners here on Canary Wharf. The charge, the riders winding up the power now for the final sprint. Uh, Faulkner comes through, but the uh, the jerseys, Holworth comes through, makes that move for next G. Lawrence Stevens is there. Now they're winding up for this finishing sprint. Lawrence Stevens from Tibco, Silicon Valley Bank. 100 metres to go up towards the line. Kathleen Holworth from Team Next G crosses the line and takes that a great final sprint there from uh, Kathleen Holworth from Team Next G Racing. We've been talking about them all night. Lauren Steven crosses the line in second. Uh, Faulkner, Kristen Faulkner takes uh, third. Leanne Ganza up there in fourth. Leah Dixon in fifth. Britt Carnarvon, Emma Norsgaard, Marissa Bax and uh, Rose Hogeboom. That's your order across the line. Joe, what a great move there from uh, Kathleen Holworth from Next G going clear. That was a great move. So she just jumped just a little bit earlier and you could easily think, oh, has she gone too early there? But she, she got a gap of about 10 metres. We could see on the left of the screen on that graphic that she had a sort of 10, 11 metre gap and no one could close that. She timed her sprint to perfection absolutely brilliantly. She'd been up there all day. We've been talking about her team, perhaps been looking at her teammate Britt Carnarvon a little bit. But yeah, brilliantly timed sprint and taking a very well-deserved win. And then you can see all our riders. There's a few tired riders out there, isn't there? There's there's our uh, winner, Kathleen Holworth. Uh, we said the three days of, of racing, virtual racing, just how tough it is and finishing uh, with a criterium. It was, it was a really interesting race to watch, but so fast that no one could attack or, or get away. Yeah, the, the action was mainly, unfortunately, riders going out the back of the group. I think there were a lot of sore legs out there on their turbos today. Third, obviously, third day of racing. And, and it was another brutal race. It, it was full gas from the start, constantly high power output. And then, of course, the accelerations out the corners making it even more difficult, even more challenging. So I think definitely if you've got tired legs, there was really no hiding in tonight's stage. But a very well-deserved winner and still a brilliant race, race to watch unfold. And you got to say, you know, give uh, you know full credit there to Leah Dixon, our uh, our general classification leader, right, with taking a, a hilltop finish yesterday. But she rode really well in defence of that jersey today. She did ride really well. So we were constantly seeing her name at the, at the head of the standings. We were constantly seeing that Skoda leaders jersey up the front of that group, which I think must be really difficult to do virtually to keep yourself in a good position. But she really did that very well. And, you know, hugely well-deserved overall win there for the British rider, Leah Dixon of Team Tibco. We're going to uh, dive in and have a quick chat with Lauren Stevens. Lauren, uh, a great, uh, great finish there. Uh, Kathleen Holworth from Next G just got away just before the finish. Uh, another second place today. Yeah, keeping it consistent with uh, second place two days in a row. <laughs> And in terms of just take us through that, because that we the the words that everyone's been using throughout this is pretty brutal, savage racing. That looked so so tough. Uh, sum it up for us. Yeah, on the virtual world, it's full gas the whole time. I mean, and we just wanted to keep Leah Dixon in the the lead, and we were hoping to get the win today too. But we're super excited that we won the overall with Leah. Well, great riding. Well done, Lauren. Thanks uh, Thanks for joining us. It's been great to watch Team Tibco in action. We're going to hear from our winner now, Kathleen uh, Holworth from uh, Team uh, Next G, Sir Vase Scanava, the uh, team manager there, just uh, getting set up. Uh, hopefully, Kathleen, can you uh, hear us okay? <laughs> Kathleen, we're, uh, can you hear me okay, Kathleen? We'll just get it set up. As we said a little bit earlier on, we're pushing technology to its limit a little bit uh, here. We'll just get Kathleen connected. Uh, Kathleen, it's Marty here. Can you can you hear me okay? Take us take us through that finish. You managed to just gap everyone on on that final lap. That that looked uh, that's a great victory for you. So we're just uh, trying to get connected to to Kathleen. I'll uh, I'll go again. 
We'll come back to Kathleen uh, momentarily, as we said. But we are pushing to the, the technology here. Um, everyone virtually around the around the world, all on their uh, their webcams and and trying to get connected. Uh, normally, one of us runs down the street and uh, holds a microphone under them to uh, to interview them. Uh, that's uh, you can see our top three there: Christina Holworth, Lauren Stevens, and uh, Kristen uh, Faulkner, Tipkin, Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. We're going to go and hear from uh, Hugh Roberts, from uh, the CEO of the Sweet Spot Group. Um, Hugh, uh, thanks for joining us. The the race is so far this year. You had to take the decision um, early on um, with cancelling the races this year, the Women's Tour and the, the Tour of Britain. But uh, how is that looking for going forward for, for next year? Yeah, well, all your viewers will know by now that um, we've had to postpone the races, the, the Tour Series, the Women's Tour and the, the Tour of Britain. And um, I'm pleased to say that because of the support we've had from all our stakeholders up and down the country, these are the governments and councils that back the race and host us. To a man, they've all uh, been extremely cooperative and been working very closely with us to make the transition from moving the race from 2020 to 2021 extremely smooth and seamless and um and actually i think uh, in, in 2021 we can look forward to even better races than perhaps we would have had in 2020 if i'm allowed to to say that so uh we wouldn't have had that without the support of uh, our colleagues up and down the country and in terms of the 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 virtual tour how do you feel that that's that's gone over the course of the last three days well, um, I'm not really uh, a digital sort of person, as most of my colleagues at Sweet Spot will testify. So I was a little bit sceptical about what the outcome was going to hold for us. But actually, I I've been really impressed uh, with the quality of the production. And so full marks to everybody involved, my colleagues at Sweet Spot. But also you and, and Joanna have done a great job bringing the whole thing to life, which is absolutely vital. And it must have been extremely difficult for you under the circumstances, not having really had uh, much chance to, to test out your uh, your skills prior to going live. So full marks to, to you two and to everybody at uh, RGT for putting on a fantastic uh, show. And I think it's just the beginning of what could be a whole new era of, uh, of, of, of virtual cycling and uh, who knows where it might take us all. That's very kind of you. Thank you. And just finally, anyone that's been inspired um, to get on their bikes, uh, have you got any any uh, exciting things coming up that they might be able to get involved with? Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I wouldn't be wearing this T-shirt if it wasn't for the fact that um, in two weeks' time, I'm about to embark on the Great Tour, which is our circumnavigation of Britain, which we're doing uh, again, having done it twice before, once in 2010 and in 2015. So this is very much a philanthropic oriented ride, 64 days of continuous uh, riding around the countryside starting on July the 4th uh, in the Isle of Wight. I hope perhaps uh, Marty and maybe Joanna, if you're still there, <laughs> might come and join us uh, on one yeah, of the stages. I'm still, yeah, I'm still here. Uh, good. So um, uh, if you'd like to look up the Great Tour, uh, you can find out where we're coming near you and you're very welcome to, to join us. But um, this is all about our effort to try and say thank you to the, the National Health Service, the workers, the key workers, the essential workers. And also, I've got two friends of mine who are joining me, um, one of whom has got diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and uh, his name is Robin Young, and he'll be joining me for the whole journey. And so he's going to be raising money and awareness for diabetes, which, of course, has a close association with, with cycling, as we all know. And also, um, many of you will know that... Um, my work colleague and, and good friend Toby Lapper, he has a son who, uh, bless him, is, is, is autistic. So uh, we're going to be raising money for that charity as well. Um, so look out for the great tour if you get a chance. Well, thanks well, very much. Thanks we'll, very I might much. take well, you up on that. Thanks, Hugh Roberts, for uh, for joining us. We'll uh, we'll let you go, Joanna. I've got to say, in the last three days, it's it's it really has been uh, different for us. We've been we've been we sat virtually uh, apart from each other, commentating. Um, sum up the last three days for you. 
I think the word brutal is probably the word to describe uh, the racing. It has been brilliant to watch. I really enjoyed seeing all the rider webcams and seeing those pain caves and seeing how hard everybody is working. And also brilliant to see how team strategy really nicely unfolded on stage two. So I really loved how realistic that climb was up to Burton Dusset. So brilliant racing and a very well-deserved winner overall, Leah Dixon. Indeed. Let's have a look back at the finish, though, of our third and final stage here in Canary Wharf. But the, the, this uh, leading group was uh, was really, as we said, the most of the action was just riders getting shredded off the back. But a great move, though, uh, late on from uh, Kathleen Holworth. Let's just uh, talk through this finish. That's the moment that she went, Joe. Yeah, she goes there just over 200 metres to go, gets the jump on everyone else, brings out sort of 7, 8, 9, 10 metres. And as we come around this last corner, Lauren Stevens have just got a little bit too much of a gap to close. We saw over 12 watts per kilo there for our winner. So huge amount of power output, but timing it to perfection, which is absolutely key as well. It was indeed great finish. You could just see everyone else just uh, coming in towards the, uh, the finish there. It's uh, a great... Uh, great stage victory for team next g at the end i think a lot of riders as well you could you could see that how much they've embraced the the virtual racing here um we were talking a little bit with the with the uh with the the team directors and and we've also just had announced that uh leah dixon is the uh is the general classification a winner by uh 22 seconds and i think we can uh, hear from <laughs> leah dixon now leah you've got to be so delighted stage win and the winner of the first ever skoda v women's tour Hi, oh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm so pleased to have been able to finish her off. It, it did get super stressful there for a while. It was a really hard, tough race, but I'm so pleased that I managed to get the win from the team and the team got another great result with second and third as well. Just, to, you were very much to the front the whole race there though. How, how much did, was that to, uh, trying to stay vigilant and make sure that you, you kept the power up um, to stay at the front of the group? Yeah, I just, I knew that it was going to be really kind of a really tough race and it was really important to keep concentration. And I just felt that the best tactic for that was to be able to stay towards the front when we got the bigger group with the lapped riders. It was hard to see who was who, so I just tried to stay around Lauren and Kristen, but that last 10k was, was really tough. I think I was at 190 beats a minute for a very long time. <laughs> and just finally, how much confidence does this uh, give you getting back on the road? Yeah, um, it's amazing. So for me, I'm pretty new to cycling, um, so it gives me a lot of confidence to know that I've kind of got that um you know it ends in there to be able to kind of keep up with some of well my heroes really <laughs> You rode brilliantly, Leah. This is Joe here. So I just wanted to say well done from me. Um, have you found it difficult to keep motivated at all during lockdown? And what are you looking forward to most um, for, the, for the rest of the season? Um, so for me, like I said, this is my first season as a pro cyclist. So I'm just kind of just super excited to get back to racing. And I've just kind of embraced this lockdown period to work on my weaknesses, get lots of training in. Um, and the virtual race has been a great way to kind of keep that intensity and also bond with my teammates. Excellent. Thank you very much. You rode brilliantly. So it was, a, it was a real pleasure to watch that. Great job, Leah. Thanks. Thank you. So we're going to have a look at the general classification. So there you have it. Leah Dixon from Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank takes the Skoda V Women's Tour general classification ahead of her teammate Kristen Faulkner. Danny Christmas moves herself back up to third. Great riding from the young Brit though. Eileen Gardner from the Cam's Tafosi team finishes in fourth just ahead of Emma Norsgaard Jorgensen. Lizzie Banks from Big Lakatusha finishes sixth. Lauren Stevens set to second place on stages is in seventh. Lizzie Holden drops to seventh. Great riding as well. We've uh, we've been champion her for the last three days. Megan Dickinson, Mick Dickinson from Skoda DSI Cycling Academy takes ninth. And Marissa Bax, another rider that we've talked about for Bela Crush Pro Cycling rounds out the top 10.
Joanna, you've uh, it's, it's your it's your phrase. Who's been your power monster of the week? Oh, good question. Um, probably been really impressed by uh, Kristen Faulkner. So she, she's not won a stage, but she's been consistently up there for Team Tibco. And of course, her teammate taking the win, Leah Dixon, but she's looked very much in control. It's her first year as a pro as well with Team Tibco. So really looking forward to seeing how she develops throughout the next couple of seasons. For me, Mega Dickerson as well, the, the, and Eileen Gardner have been have been great to uh, to to both watch them in action this week. Are we going to hear from Kathleen Holworth? We've now got her from the uh, from Team Next G. Let's go straight in there, Kathleen. Uh, thanks for joining us. Just take us through uh, that finish. Great move uh, coming into the final couple of hundred meters. Yeah, well, thank you. I uh, I really enjoyed today, and um, I knew when we went into the last yeah last straight la lane, I thought I just have to go and push through, and yeah, it's a real cool experience to ride this virtual race, and I'm happy that we could do it like this in the past days. So. It looked really, it looked really, really tough out there. Um, you, you're looking pretty fresh now, but was it was it as hard as it as it looked? Um, yeah, it was definitely hard. It's because it's inside. It's super warm, um, and it's constantly pushing through. And I may look a bit fresh now, but I'm not feeling super fresh. <laughs> Well done, Kathleen. That was that was brilliant racing. Um, you've, you're part of an under-23 development squad. How have you found being part of that team and what are you looking forward to going forward now? Um, yeah, I'm super happy to be part of this team. We get full support and we really focus on our development, which is super good for us because we have no big pressure from inside out. And we get a lot of chances and everything is set up really great and like, Today, the final stage, we are here at the sponsor place. So um, it's super cool how everything is combined here. That's brilliant. Well done, you. Well done to all of your team as well. Thanks, Kathleen. Well, thanks, we'll, let Kathleen. We'll let you go. Yeah, great winner. It's great to see the, the this under-23 team uh, coming through. It's great to see uh, a rider like that get, get a, a stage victory. Yeah, it really was. So we've been talking about her team a little bit. Uh, and like I say, as an under 23 female rider, it can be a little bit of a gap in terms of your development going straight from the junior ranks into elite women's racing against the likes of Anna Meek Van Vluten, Anna van der Breggen, Marianne Voss in, in these elite women's pelotons. So it's brilliant that a team like that is developing those younger riders. And that overall win for Leah Dixon. It's been great the last three days. Uh, I'm sure you've all enjoyed the uh, the knowledge that uh, Joanna brings and the uh, the interpretation of the, especially of the the power data. So big thanks to you, Joe, for that. Hopefully we'll all be on the on the road together really really soon i hope you've enjoyed the skoda v women's tour as much as we have we will see you all very soon stay safe get out on your bikes from joanna Rouse and myself mike mcdonald we'll see you soon bye for now